Well, what's going on, everybody? Stubbs here from Retro Handhelds, and today we've got the PlayStation Portal by Sony. This is not a handheld. This is totally just a PS5 accessory, and maybe that's okay. Maybe we don't need it to do a billion things. Maybe we want to have a focus device with a focused experience that you just turn on and it does the thing and then you do the thing and then you enjoy and then you stop. That's this device. Now I've had it for a little while and at first I was ready to write it off. I was like, this thing's dumb. Why'd Sony spend R&D money and waste everybody's time when they could have given us a Vita 2? No. They did this. I changed my mind, decided to make a video because I am not returning this, I don't think. I think I want to keep it. And that feeling came over me slowly as I was at my in-laws for Thanksgiving, playing on the PS Portal, connected to my PS5 at home, playing some Spider-Man and some Star Ocean and Tony Hawk, and I'm like, this is near zero latency as far as, as, far as I can tell, and I'm having fun. I don't need to think, I just turn it on and it does its job. It works, and it works well. It works in my house, it works on the go. For my network at home, it works really well. The screen. It is a subpar, poor man's IPS display. It is not a quality IPS display. This should have been OLED. For $200, should have been OLED. Also, it's a bummer that we can't use Bluetooth headphones with it. We have to use Sony's Bluetooth headphones, which cost $100 at a minimum. Also, you can't use things like AR glasses with this to have like maybe an OLED screen or, or just an external monitor. This screen and that's it. Another bummer is that while it should be able to play any game on your PS5, it can't. It can only play, of course, games that are downloaded to your PS5, not any cloud streaming. So you, you can't use that PS Plus perk. Kind of a bummer. I get it. You don't want to double stream right to the device. Sony says no, but it would have been nice if they could have had their cloud games just stream directly to this. OK, just directly to skip the PS5 to stream those games to this. Why couldn't that have been a thing? And here's the other thing. If you own a PS4, why can't you use this with a PS4? Sony wants you to buy a PS5, maybe? Hmm? Maybe? I don't know. I'm not, you know, it's a conspiracy, man. Is it true? I don't know. The price at $200 is the same price as the DualSense Edge, and this is a better controller than the DualSense Edge. Shorter battery life in that thing, and also, to me, not as comfortable. This is the most comfortable DualSense controller I've ever used. You get the full haptic experience of your DualSense here, and you can't say that about your Kishi. Okay, you get the full experience, fun colored lights, all right. While the screen's not amazing, it's definitely serviceable. Now, if we could have gotten this around $160, that'd be a whole different story. It is one trick pony. It does one thing and one job, and it does its job very well. So you're not going to be playing emulation on this. You're not going to be hacking it. You're not going to be doing any of that stuff, although it does have Android underneath the hood. Supposedly, we saw the Nitrix channel, right? As of now, no one's figured out a way to get past the firmware on here. And so it works well in my Wi-Fi 6 network. Almost no noticeable latency or lag even playing it directly in front of my TV and looking at the two, as you can see in the footage, it is near imperceptible. The speakers aren't awful, but it just boots up, lets you play a PlayStation game, and I've been working through my games because of this, okay? It's so nice to be able to let someone else use the TV, like my kids or my wife, and then I can continue playing on the go wherever I am. There are other streaming handhelds, of course, not only just your phone or a tablet, devices like the Logitech G Cloud coming in at the $250 price point to $300 price point. Oh man, that one just does it so well. And in some ways it does it better. If Logitech got that down to $200, they would wipe the market with, with that device, man. It would be so good. And you other devices like the Absolute handheld for a little bit less for $180. Even that I would say might be a better experience for you but I would say probably save the money. This isn't a necessary device. Again, slap a Kishi or something, a game sir onto your phone, download the PS Play app and enjoy that because that really is potentially a better option because you can fine tune all the networking settings to your network. Another caveat of this is that you can't do that on here. You can't figure any network settings. The software is super basic right now. Why is there an airplane mode? You only have a few options. You can't configure anything on your network. You can't really mess with latency or bitrate or anything. At least on my network, it works really well. So I'm still coming away impressed with it. I just think it's a little bit much for my personal use case. I am going to use it though. I'm interested to see if any future 
hacking does happen. If there's any custom firmware we ever see on this thing, I wanna have the device in that case that happens. These are still hard to find to order on Best Buy's website, but so let me know what you guys think. Until the next one, this has been Stubbs. Take care of your handhelds, everybody, and take care of each other. Bye.